Greetings, and welcome to our lesson on iterative logic. We're going to do a lot of videos on iterative logic, and uh, it's easy to get intimidated. But all iterative logic really means in computer science speak is loops. So in this lesson, I'm going to show you how to create programs that loop, that do the same thing over and over. In this video, we're primarily going to talk about the structure of a loop, the major parts that you need in order to make a loop work. And in future lessons, we're going to take that structure and use it to solve more complicated problems. To help us understand why loops are even needed in the first place, let's go ahead and uh, write a program here that prints out all the numbers between 0 and 9. You already know how to do this, right? All we have to do is call the print function, and we can start off with a number, and then through the power of copy and paste, we just uh, adjust it so that we're printing out all the numbers between 0 and 9. Nice. First try. Alright, so this works. Um, it's it's fine. Uh, but it only works when we have a small number of numbers that we want to print. Let's say I wanted to print off every tween, thing between zero and a million, right? Copying and pasting just isn't going to cut it. So now I'm going to show you how to write the same code using a loop, and it's only going to be four lines. So in, before we get started with the loop, let's think about what is the thing that we want to do a lot of times. It looks like it's printing, right? But we don't want to print the same number over and over. We want to keep track of, I printed a 0, now I need to print a 1. I printed a 1, now I need to print a 2. So we need something that keeps track of where we are in our counting. So let's go ahead and make that uh, a variable that does that. I'm going to call it current number. And it's going to start off at 0, because we're starting off counting. Now I'm going to introduce the keyword for a loop, which is while. So I'm going to say while. And then here I'm going to put a condition under which I'm going to keep counting. So I'm going to keep counting as long as current number is less than 10. And inside my loop, now this is where I actually do the thing I want to do. So I'm going to print uh, the current number. And if I do nothing but this, you will actually see I am uh, just going to print out zeros over and over because I never change the value of current number. So my last step, I'm going to take current number and after I've counted a 0, I want to count a 1. After I've counted a 1, I want to count a 2. So every time I print a number, I'm going to take current number and add 1 to it. So when I press play, it prints all the numbers between 0 and 9. You can actually see in slow motion what's happening. So here if we turn on the debugger, I'll make a variable called current number. And what happens in the loop is uh, Python will check the current number, which is currently 0 and see is that less than 10? That's true. So it executes everything inside the loop which is inside these indents. So it prints out 0 and then it takes 0 and adds 1 to it and says current number it used to be 0 now it's 1. And now it goes back up to the top and says is 1 less than 10? That's a true statement so it does it again right? It prints out 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and then once you get to this part where current number is 10 Watch what happens. While 10 is less than 10, that's a false statement, right? 10 is not less than 10. It exits and the program ends. So that, in a nutshell, is how loops work. Loops are powerful because they basically let us take large amounts of code and reduce them, right? Now I don't, I, with only four lines, I can count to any number. It doesn't, it's not just 0 to 9. I can replace this with a, you know, 50, and it goes to count from 0 to 50, and I'm not adding more lines of code. So it's a way to do something very efficiently and repeatedly. So a loop is just a section of code that repeatedly executes as long as a condition is true. So there are two types of loops in Python, for loops and while loops. This lesson we're going to focus on while loops. And you already saw the general structure of it, but we'll go over it again. Everything that's indented is inside our loop, so this is the thing that's going to be repeated over and over as long as this condition is true. And this is exactly the same if conditions we had uh, when we were doing conditional logic. And then you'll notice there's also some other similarities to if statements. You have the colon and you have the indent. All the stuff that is indented is part of the loop. All the stuff that is not indented is not part of the loop. So you typically need a loop whenever you need to do something a lot of times. So the common problem you'll see in this class is uh, get n numbers from the user or get n values from the user. When that happens, you would use a loop in order to uh, loop that many times and grab that many values. There are also some keywords that you see in uh, programs and problems uh, for each, for every, keep doing this until, uh, getting the average, repeat until, those are all uh, code words for I need a loop. Uh, and when we get into graphics you will see that uh, animation really is nothing more than drawing something, erasing it, and moving that thing over and over and over. 
and that uh, loops will play a big role in making the animations that you will need for your final project. Now we're going to take that same loop and we're going to make some slight modifications to it so we can do some other things. So the first thing is rather than just print out all the numbers between 0 and 10, let's go to a user specified number. So right now this number is pretty magical because whatever number I put here is how many times this code segment will run. So I can replace it, right? I can say user number equals and I'm just going to get a, a, a number from the user. And then I'm going to say, instead of going 10 times, now I'm going to do how many times the user types, right? So if he types 5, I'm going to go from 0 to 5. So if I print this and do 5, it goes from, oh, it doesn't go quite there. Look at the inequality. When, when we keep adding 1 to current number and 5 is less than 5, that's false. So what we would have to do is maybe change it so that it would print out all the numbers between 0 and 5. Alternatively, we could add one. So you kind of have to mess with the inequalities a little bit. But you'll see that now we have a loop that, let's say I put uh, a 1,000. It's probably a bad idea. Now we have a loop that will count and do something a 1,000 times. And we're not having to change much to it. We just basically changed the end condition. The next example is, what if we want to write a loop that asks users for the number of grades and then gets that many values from the user? So now, um, I'll change this variable. It'll be the number of grades. And then I will loop that many times. So if I type 5, it will execute this code 5 times. And instead of printing a number, what I want to do is get a grade. So I will say the grade equals, and we'll just do another input. So now, whatever the user types, they type a 12, this code will run 12 times. So, I, for example, if I say three numbers, 90, 100, and 85, that worked. So you can see that the general structure of the loop is pretty much untouched. We're just making tweaks to it to do you know, the little things we want it to do. So it turns out that the general structure of a loop can be broken down into four main components. And the mnemonic we use to describe those components is called item. I stands for initialize your variable. Uh, this variable here is what we call our loop control variable. It's the variable we use to determine if we are uh, leaving the loop or not. You'll notice here that in our example, current number is our loop control variable. So I stands for initialize. T is our test. This is where we determine, looking at our loop control variable, are we done? So in this case, I is the loop control variable. In this case, current number is our loop control variable, so this is our test. E stands for execute. This is where you insert the code that does whatever you want to do a hundred times, a thousand times, a million times, or so forth. So here, this is our execute phase. And the last phase is modify. This is where we take our loop control variable and we adjust it. We change its value. And by changing its value, when we go back up here, we make it so that the loop may not happen anymore, right? So without this line of code, you have what we call an infinite loop. So I'll show that to you, right? Um, modify. If I don't have this line, we never change current number. So current number is always less than num grades. And therefore, if I type 3, no matter what happens, the loop never ends. All right? So that's it. That's the general structure. And there's a lot going on here. So this is a, a good place to stop. Uh, take a moment and study this general structure. In the following video, we're going to show you how starting with this loop, we can use it to solve some uh, pretty robust problems. So thanks for watching. Take care and uh, see you soon. All right, bye.